I wish that that long stivardo had never passed into the perilous channel between the simpler gates. And I wish that the pine that made her masts and oars still waved in the winds on Mount Pelion, and that the great fish hawk still nested in them, and that the great adventurer had never voyaged into that Asian sunrise, the shore of morning to the golden fleece. For then my mistress Medea would never have seen Jason, nor loved and saved him, nor cast off her home to come with him into this country of the smiling and chattering Greeks and the wolves of corn, over which I see evil hang like a cloud. For she is not meek, but fierce, and the daughter of a king. But at first all went well. The folk of Corinth were kind to her. They were proud of her beauty, and Jason loved her. Happy is a home where men and women love and are faithful. But now all has changed. Now all is black hatred, for Jason has turned from her calling the old bond a barbarian mating and not a Greek marriage. He has cast her off and married the copper-haired child of Creon, the ruler here. He won fine friends, worldly advantage, and a high place here in court. And for these things, he would cast Medea like a harlot and betray the children that she had borne him. He's not very wise, I think. For Medea, Medea lies in his house, broken with pain and rage. She will neither eat nor drink except with that of her own tears. She turns her face to the earth, remembering her father's home and her native land, which she abandoned for the love of this man who now despises her. And if I try to say any words of comfort to her, she just stares at me eyes like stone, for she is like a stone on the shore, or a wave in the sea, and I fear she hates even her own children. She is learning what it is like to be a foreigner, to be cast out, alone and despised. But she will never learn to be humble, and she will never learn to drink insults like harmless water. I am in terror of her. For whether she will thread the knife through her own heart, or whether she will hunt the bridegroom and his new bride, or what more dreadful evil stalks in the dark forest of her mind, I know that Jason would have been wiser to tempt a lioness, or to naked hand and steal a wolf from a tiger. Oh, but here come the happy children. Little they know their mother. Oh, servant of Malay, why do you stand out here keeping watch in solitude with such grim eyes? Is it some trouble of your own that you are lamenting? I should think Medea would need your care. It is all one to Medea whether I'm there or here. Yes, is mine. My trouble. My lady's grief is my grief, and it has hurt me. Only so that I have to come and speak into the earth and sky. Is she still in that deep despair? You are lucky old watchdog of Jason's voice. I envy you. You do not see her. This evil is not declining. It is just at dawn. And I dread the lion I glare with noon. Is she so rock? Yet neither you nor Medea knows the latest and worst. What? What? I shouldn't have spoken. I know. You tell me the truth, old man. You and I are two slaves. We can trust each other. We can keep secrets. I heard them say, when we walked by the Holy Fountain Kareem, when the old men sit beside the stone benches, they were saying Creon, the lord of this land, intends to drive Medea out and the children with her, these innocent boys, out of this house and out of Corinth, and left to wander the wild world, helpless and homeless. I don't know. I do not believe that Jason may hate the mother. He would hardly let his own son be cast out. Well, he's made a new alliance. He's no friend of this house. Yes, that's were true. <laughs> Listen, I hear her voice.
keep them away from her. Take them to the other two quickly. That's the word! Pry! Cross! Burn! Destroy! Destruction! <laughs> In my terror, to hear her constantly hopping back at those children like some fierce hound at fault. Unhappy one, they are not to blame! to be born of high race, to be brought up powerful and willful in a great house, unruled but ruling many? For then, if misfortune strikes, it is unendurable. It drives you mad. Now I say that the poor people are the happier, the little commoners and the humble people, the poor in spirit. For they lie low in the wind and live while the tall oaks and cloud-raking mountain pines go mad in the wind, writhe, groan, and crash <laughs> of the wild and terrible justice of God brings on the great people the greatest disasters. <laughs> what do you want? I hear her crying again. It is dreadful. Her lamentation. She is beautiful and deep in grief. We couldn't help her. We are friends of this house, and its trouble hurts us. Yeah, my friends, this is not a home, it is broken. It is a house full of grief and of weeping. God, let me die. What I need is all dead. All dead, all dead. Under the great cold stones for a year, and a thousand years, and another thousand. Old as the stones, but noble again. The shining sky. Divine earth. Hearken not to the songs of this woman sing. It is not her mind's music. Her mind is not here. She does not know what she prays for. Pain and breath are the sickness. Unhappy one. Never pray for death. Never pray for death. He is here all too soon. He strikes from the clear sky like a hawk. He hides behind green leaves or he waits around the corner of a wall. Oh, never pray for death, never pray for death, because their prayer will be answered. I know poison, I know the bright teeth of steel, I know fire, but I will not be mocked by my enemies, and I will not endure pity, pity and conceal their sister and brother, twain born. I will not die tamely, and I will not allow blubber eyed pity, nor contempt either to snivel over the Sounds of my tomb, I am not a Greek woman. No, a barbarian woman. From savage cultures. At the bitter end of the Black Sea, does she boast of that? She doesn't know what she is saying. Poison, death magic, the sharp sword, the hemp rope, death magic, death. I hate Jacob and Jacob's soul. Old and honored servant of the great house, do you think it is wise to leave your lady alone in there? Except perhaps a few slaves. Those in that terrible acropolis of deadly thoughts. We Greeks believe that solitude is very dangerous. Great passions grow into monsters in the dark of the mind. But if you share them with loving friends, they remain human. They can be endured. <laughs> I think you ought to persuade me, dear, to come out from that dark building and speak with us before her heart breaks or she does harm to herself. She has lived among us. We have learned to love her. We would gladly tell her so. It might comfort her spirit. Do you think so? She will not listen. When is she coming? Please speak carefully to her. Make your words a soft music. My dear? Oh, my child. They say she's dangerous. Look at her eyes. She is a witch. That's not evil. She can make old men young again. She did it for Jason's father. All the people of her country are witches. They know about drugs and magic. They're savages. But they have a wild wisdom. Poor soul. It hasn't helped this so much. Oh, well, look at the light of the sun this one last time. I wish from that blue sky the white wolf of lightning 
would leap and burst my skull and my brain. And like a burning babe, cling to these breath. Someone is here. I did not know I had visitors. Women of Corinth. If anything has been spoken too loudly, consider that I believed I was alone, and I have some provocation. You've come, let me suppose, with love and sympathy to period my sorrow. I understand well enough that nothing is ever private in a Greek city. Whoever withholds anything is thought sullen or proud, undemocratic, I think you call it. This is not always just, but we know that justice, at least on earth, is a name, not a fact. And as for me, I wish to avoid any appearance of being proud. Of what? Of affliction? I will show you my naked heart. You know that my Lord Jason has left me and made a second marriage. He's a bright haired child of wealth and power. I too was a child of power, but not in this country. And I spent it for the love of Jason. I poured it out before him like water. I made him drink it like wine. I gave him success and fame, and I saved him his precious life, not once, but many times. You may have heard of what I did for him. I betrayed my father for him. I killed my brother to save him. I made my own land to hate me forever. I fled west with Jason in the Greek ship under the thunder of the sail, weeping and laughing. <coughs> A huge journey through the Black Sea and the Bosphorus where the rocks clang together, through the Sea of Marmora and through Hellespont, watched by the spearmen of wealthy Troy, and home. Greek waters, his home, my exile, my endless exile. And here I have loved him and borne him sons. And this man has left me and taken Cleon's young daughter to enjoy her fortune, put aside her salt her hair and to kiss her young mouth. She is terrible, stone to stone eyes. Look, the foam flake on her lips that thickens with her breathing. She is pitiable. She has suffered great injuries. I do not know what other women. I do not know how much a Greek woman will endure. The people of my race are somewhat rash and intemperate. As for me, I simply want to die. Jason is not to smile at his bride over my grave, nor that great man Creon to hang wreaths and make a feast day in Corinth. And let the wreaths be a bright, blinding fire, the song of high wailing, and the wine blood. Daughter of sorrow, beware. It is dangerous to dream of wine. It's even worse to speak of wailing or blood. For the images of the mind they find their way out. They work their way into life. Let them work into life. There are evils that cannot be cured by evil. Patience remains, and the gods watch all. Let them watch my enemies go down in blood. Oh, my dear, beware. So great person is coming. <coughs> Creon is coming. Lady, he is drunk with anger. 
I plead, bend in this wind and do not be broken. You have admirers, I see. Abate your pride. These people will not be with you where you are going. Medea, woman of the stone forehead and hate-filled eyes, I have made my decision. I have decided that you must leave this land at once and go into banishment. No. With your children. I intend to remove a root of disturbance out of the soil of Corinth. I am here to see to it. I will not return home until it is done. You mean banishment? Exile. Banishment. Go where you may, Medea, but here you abide no more. I with my children? I will not take them away from you. The children, my lord. What are you muttering? Nothing. I am praying to my gods for wisdom and to you for mercy. The children are still very young, tender and helpless. You know, my lord, what exile means. To wander with fear and famine for guide and driver. To all the wild winter storms and the rage of the sun. And to be derided, pelted with stones in the villages. Held a little lower than the scavenger dogs, take scorn and slaves. The children, my lord, are Jason's children. Your chosen friend, I believe. And now even closely <coughs> bound. And as for me, your servant, Oh, Master, of course, what have I done? Why must I be cast? I will tell you frankly, because you nourish rancorous, ill will towards persons whom I intend to protect. I send you out before you have time to do harm here, and you are notorious for occult knowledge, sorcery, poisons, magic. Then say, you can even send down the moon from heaven and make the holy stars to falter and run backward against the purpose and current of nature. Ha! Huh? As to that, I know not. I know you are dangerous. You have threatened my daughter. You have to go. But I wish her well, my lord. I wish her all happiness. I hope that Jason may be as kind to her as to me. That is your wish? I misspoke. I thought of all things. I acknowledge, Medea, that you have some cause for grief. I all the more must guard against your dark wisdom and bitter heart. You misjudge me cruelly. It is true that I have some knowledge of drugs and medicines. I can sometimes cure sickness. Is that a crime? These dark rumors, my lord, are only the noise of popular gratitude. You must have observed it often. Anyone knows a little more than the common man he is suspected. If he brings a new talent, how promptly the hateful whispers begin. But you, oh Lord of Corinth, are not a common man. You will not fear knowledge. No, nor change my decision. I am here to see you leave this house and the city in not much time. Move quickly, gather your things, and go. Pity you, my dear, but you must go. You pity me? You pity me? I will endure a dog's pity or a wart grown toes. May God who hears me, we shall see in the end who's to be pitied. Yes, and I'll keep her safe of your female hatred. Therefore, I send you out of this land. It is not true, my lord. I am not jealous. Jealous for the sake of Jason. I am far past wanting Jason. You took him and you gave him to her. And I will say that you did wisely. And very well, my lord. The daughter is <coughs> beautiful and she is loved by all. I were near her, I would soon love her. You can speak sweetly enough. You can make honey in your mouth like a brown bee when it serves your turn. Not honey, be true. Trust you or not, you are going out of this country, Medea. What I decide is fixed. 
It is like the firm rocks of awful Corinth, which neither earthquake can move nor a flood of tears melt. Make ready quickly. I have a guest in my house. I should return to him. Guest? What guest, my lady? Please ask him what guest. If powerful and friendly, we have refuge. I know that your will is granite, Creon. But even on the harsh face of granite mountains, some flowers of mercy may grow in season. Have <coughs> mercy on my sons, Creon, though there is none for me. How long, woman? This is decided. Done. Finished. I am not a beggar. I do not wish to trouble you. I shall not live long. Well, you grant me a few hours yet. One day to prepare in one little day before I go out of Corinth forever. What? No, I told you. The day is today, Medea. This day, and the hour is now. There are no flowers on this mountain. Not one anemone, not one violet. Your face, my lord, is like flint. If I could find the right words, some God would lift me a touch of eloquence and show you my heart. I lift it out of my breast and turn it over in my hands. You see how pure it is of any harm or malice towards you and your household. Look at it, my lord! Power, <coughs> not will rule. 
Unhappy Medea, what haven, what sanctuary, to where will you wander? Which of the gods drives you through waves of woe? The more and broken, the hostile and anger has hopeless from heart. <coughs> this man, this barking dog, this cruel fool! Gods of my father's country, you saw me low on my knees, humble, holding my heart in my hand for a dog to bite, for this dog's taste. Women, it is a bitter thing to be a woman. A woman is weak for warfare. She must use cunning. Men boast their battles. But I tell you this and we know it. It is easier to stand in battle three times in front line in a stabbing fury than it is to bear one child. And a woman, they say, can do no good but in childbirth. It may be so. She can do evil. She can do evil. I wept before that dog. I degraded my knees to him. I galled and flattered him. A triple fool! He has given me all that I needed. A space of time, a little time. That was dearer to me than what I am now. And if by today the world is not turned, and turned sharp too, and let your dog Creon send two or three slaves to kill me and the court to strangle me. I will stretch out my throat to it. And I have a bitter hope, women. I begin to see light through the dark wood. Between the monstrous trunks, at the end of the tangled forest, an eye hole pinpoint of light. I shall not die perhaps as a pigeon dies, nor as a lamb that feels a hand on its head and looks <coughs> up from the knife to the man's face and dies. No, like some yellow-eyed beast that has killed its hunters, that means lay down on the hound's bodies and the broken spears. How to strike them, what means to use. There are so many doors through which pain for death may glide in and catch each one. Tell me, do you know what gets in the ground now? What? Oh, an Athenian ship came from the north last night. It is Egypt, Lord of Athens. Some God has sent him here, some savior God. He is leaving, I think, today. My lady, my lady, please. Lord Aegis is here in court, Creon's guest. If you will see him and speak him there, I know we have refuge. Be quiet. I have things in my hands to do. Listen to me. You are driven out of court. You must find shelter. Aegis of Athens is here. What's that? <coughs> I lifted you with this long in these arms. I gave you milk from these breasts, and I saw this beautiful little body straighten and grow tall. Child, almost my child, how can I try not to save you? Life is better than death. Not now. Time is running out. I have time, oh, I have time. It would be good to stand here for a thousand years. You think of nothing but the death of three persons. There's no hope then. <coughs> if you could do this red thing that you so dream of, all the course before I'm against you. After I have heard the last broken moan, Corinth, what's that? I'll sleep, I'll sleep well. I am alone and against all. I'm so weary that it is pitiful. Look, who's coming? I see sunlight glitter on lamp heads. Oh, 
It is Jason. Jason's Medea's worst enemy. We should have been her dearest protector. What business have you here? You women cluster like buzzing bees at the hive door. Where's Medea? There. Marty, for what you have done. Ha! Huh, what she has done, not I. Not by my will, she and my sons are exiled. Is there another dog here? <laughs> so, Medea, you have once more affronted and insulted the head of corn. This is not the first time I've seen what a fool anger he is. You might have lived here happily, secure, and honored. I hoped you would by being just a little decently respectful toward those in power. Instead, you had to go mad with anger and talk yourself into exile. It matters little to me what you say about me, but rulers are sensitive. Time and again, I smooth down Creon's indignation, then you, like a mad woman, like a possessed imposter, wag your head and let the words flow again. You never cease from speaking evil against him and his family. So call yourself lucky, my dear, not to get worse than that now. In spite of all this, I have your interest at heart. And I'm here to help you. Exile's a bit of business. I want to make some provision for you. I wish you no harm, although you hate me. And in particular, the children. My son, our son. You might have been decent enough to have thought of our son. Did you consider them when you betrayed this house? Certainly I considered them. It was my hope that they would grow up here, and I, having married power, could protect and favor them. And if perhaps after many years, I become dangerous for corn, for that is Creon's desire to make me his heir, our son would have been king's son. I hope to help them wherever they go. But now, of course, must look forward to younger children. That's enough. It is likely that something may happen. Something may happen to the bride and the marriage. I'll guard against it. But evidently, Creon is right to be rid of you. Have you finished yet? I thought that I would let you speak on and spread out your shamelessness before these women. The way a Tyrian traitor unrolls his rare fabrics. Do you like it, ladies? It is the dog's daughter's husband. <laughs> it is a brave person. It has finally gotten up the courage with a guard of spear to come and to look me in the face. Jason, how have I let you pull me down to this hill of vile thoughts? I did not used to talk like a common woman. I loved you once and I am ashamed of it. But there are some things that ought to be remembered by you and me. That blue day, when we drove through Hellespont into the Greek Sea, and the great shouldered heroes were singing at the oars, and those birds flying through the blown foam. That day was too fine, I suppose, for Creon's daughter's man to remember. But you might remember whether I cheated my father for you, and whether I saved your life in the field of teeth and tamed the fire-breathing, brazen-hooked bulls, and poisoned the great serpent and got you the golden fleece, and fled with you, and killed my brother when he pursued us, making myself abominable in my own home. And then in yours I got your enemy Peleus hacked to death, by his own daughter's hands. So, Jason, whatever these fine Corinthian friends of yours may say against my rapid and tricky wisdom, you would have served. You would have served well. 
You are five times if I counted right, and all's not counted. But your adventure would have been dusty death if I'd not saved you. But now you think that your adventures are over. You are safe and high placed in Corinth. You need me no more. It is a bit of a dog, isn't it, women? It is well qualified to sleep with the dog's daughter. But for me, me, Jason, driven by the hairy snouts from the quadruped marriage bed, what does your prudent kindness advise? Shall I fly home to coaches to put my neck in a coil of knotted rope for the crimes I served you with? Or shall I go and kneel to the daughter of Peleus? They would indeed be happy to lay their hands on my head, holding the very knives and cleavers that carve their sires so the world is a bit closed to me by the things that I have done for you. I'm going to the palace to seek Aegis. There is no other hope. I see, my dear. You have been a very careful merchant of benefits. You forget none. You keep a strict reckoning. But some little things that I on my side have done for you ought to be in the books too. As for example, I carried you out of the dirt and superstition of Asiatic cultures into the rational sunlight of Greece and the marble music of Greek temples. That's your benefit? And I brought you to meet with the first minds of our time and to speak as an equal with the great evil and rulers of cities. Is that no benefit? And now, for this grievous thing that you hate me for, that I married Creon's young daughter, little Creusa, do you think that I did this as a boy or a woman out of blind passion? I did it to achieve power here and would have used that power to protect you and our son. But your jealous madness has muddled everything. And finally, as to those acts of service you so loudly boast, whom do I thank for them? I thank divine Venus, the goddess who makes girls fall in love. You did them because you had to do them. Venus compelled you. I enjoyed her favor. A man dares things, you know. He makes his adventure in the cold eye of death. And if the gods care for him, they appoint an instrument to save him. If not, he dies. You were that instrument. Here it is, the lowest of seen dread, the slime and the loathing. The muddy bottom of a mouth cup when a scoundrel begins to invoke the gods. Ha! You had better go, Jason. Bulgaria is a contagious disease. What could I do in a moment but spit at you like a drunken slave or curse you like a peasant? You had better take yourself back to little Crayusa. I came to help you and save you. Your help my... is not wanted here. Go. If I can see my boy. Go. Go quickly. This is it. I did not surely know it's loathing at all. This flesh he has touched and found. These hands that work for him. These knees that ran his errands. This body that took him that they called love and made children of it.
save me from the hateful sea, jagged lightning and the violence of love. A little love is joy in the house. A little fire is a chill against frost and darkness. A great love is a fire that burns the beams of the roof. The doorposts are flaming and the house falls. A great love is a lion in the cattle pen. The herd goes mad, the heifers run bawling, and their claws are in the flanks. Too much love is an armed robber in the treasury. He has killed the guards and he walks in blood. <coughs> and now I see the black hand. The end of great love is God save me from the unburied horror, the unbridled hatred, the vultures tearing the corpse. God, keep me clean of those evil beasts. What is she doing, that woman? Staring like stone? Staring? She's moving up. My elation. The word is pure music. Annihilation! To annihilate the past is not possible. But its fruit in the present can be nipped off. So I to look in my son's eyes and see Jason forever? How could I endure that endless defilement of lives that makes Jason with me? <coughs> that is to be clean bones on the shore. Bones have no eyes at all. How could they weep? White bones on the black seashore. fountains flow up from the earth. The smoke of sacrifice flows up from the earth. The eagle and the wild swan fly up from the earth. Righteousness also has flown up from the earth to the feet of God. It is not here but up there that pity and peace can be departed. Hatred is here. Hatred is heavy. It clings to the earth. Love flows away and hatred remains. Women hate war. But men will wage it again. Women may hate their husbands and sons their fathers, but women will never hate their own children. But as for me, I will do good by my husband. <coughs> I will love my sons and daughters and adore the God. If I should go into the house with a sharp knife to the man and his bride, or I could fire the room that they sleep in, and hear them wake in the white of the fire and cry to each other and howl like dogs. <laughs> well, but I might fail. I might be cut down first. The knife may turn in my hand or the fire must burn. And my enemies could laugh at me. No, I have subtler means. More deadly cruel. I have my dark art that fools call witchcraft. Not for nothing I have worshipped the wild gray goddess that walks in the dark. The wise one, the terrible one, the sweet huntress, flower of the night her gate in my house and murder. Please, he was leaving Creon's door. He's coming. Aegis is coming, the power of Athens. The ancient goddess to whom I and my people make the sacrifice of black lambs and black female hounds. Holy one, hunter of the crossroads, queen of the night. Help me now to remember in my mind the use of the venomous fire, the magic song and the sharp gem. My lady, he's here. Athens is here. Medea, rejoice! There is no fair greeting from friend to friend. Halen, rejoice! Medea! <coughs> rejoice. <coughs> it, it may be so. It may be that I shall rejoice before the sun sets. What has happened to you? Your eyes are cavernous and your mouth twitches. Nothing. I am quite well. Fools trouble me. <coughs> 
are you traveling from, Aegis? From Delphi, where I want to consult the ancient oracle of Apollo. Oh, Delphi, did you get a good answer? An obscure one. Some god or other has made me unable to beget a child. That is my sorrow. But the oracle never gives plain responses. I tell you these things because you are skilled in mysteries. It might help me to the god's meaning. You want a child? What did Apollo say to you? That I must not unloose the hanging foot of the wineskin until I return to the heart of my father. You have never had a child? No, as it is bitterness. But it is bitter when misfortune comes. And you have to watch the starlight faces go dim to endure it. When death comes, Medea, it is for a childless man utter despair. Darkness, extinction, one still not a life after death. Do you feel it so, Aegis? Do you feel it so? And if you had a dog-eyed enemy and you needed absolute vengeance, you'd kill the man's children first and child him. You don't like him. I do not care to think of such horror. I have no enemy. What is it? What is the matter, Medea? You are trembling. Wild fever flames in your eyes. I am quite well. Rules trouble me, you dog. What has happened to you? My dear. My love. I was not hurt my children. It is their father that hurts them. What do you mean? Jason? What has Jason done? He has betrayed me. Denied. Both me. And will. Jason has done this. Why? Why? He has cast me off and married Creon's young daughter. And Creon this very day is driving us into black <coughs> exile. Jason consents to this. He is glad of it. Why, it's atrocious. It's past belief. Asking for refuge. Ask him to receive. Do you not think that such men ought to be punished, Aegis? I think it is villainous. They told me nothing of this. Do you not think that such men ought to be punished? Where will you go? If there be any rightness in heaven or on earth, they will be punished. Where will you go to, Medea? To death, of course. She is bewildered, sir. She is lost in a deep storm and ocean of grief. Or she would ask of you refuge in Athens? Uh, so I should. That's right. Aegis, will you shelter me in Athens? Why? Yes. Yes. I will not take you now from court. It would not be right. I am Creon's guest here. I want to quarrel with him. If you, by your own means, come to Athens, I will take care of you. I could repay you for it, you know. <coughs> I make a remedy that would make a dry stick flame into fiery fruit. You'd cure me of my sterility. I could do so. You are famous for profound knowledge of drugs and charms. You'll come to Athens. <laughs> if I choose. If the gods decide so. <coughs> but Aegis, if I came, would you protect me? I have certain enemies. If powerful enemies came, begging for my blood, would you protect me? Why, yes. Yes, Athens protects. What enemies? I should need peace in the free mind while I prepare the medicines to make you well. You'll have them. You'll have them, Medea. You've seen the huge stones in the old sacred war of Athens. Come the four ends of the world, they'll not break in. You're safe there. I am your pledge. Will you swear it? Oh, why? I promise. I trust you. Your oath is formal. You swear by the high shining heaven and the fruitful earth to protect me in Athens against all men. Repeat the words, Aegis. I swear by the high shining heaven and the fruitful earth to protect you in Athens against all men. And if you should break this oath? I will not break it. If you should break this oath, the earth will give you no bread but death. In the sky, no light but darkness. I will not break it. You have to swear. If I break it, 
the earth will give me no bread but death, and the sky no light but darkness. You have sworn the gods have hurt you! When will you come to Athens? I live, it will be soon. The yokes on the necks of the horses. I have some things to do that men will talk of afterwards with hushed voices. But I and my children, safe in Athens, laugh. Is that it? Farewell, Aegis. May the gods comfort you, Mithiga. And to you also, farewell, women of corn. There's a gale behind you, sir. Back the way I had. What is she plotting in that dark mind of hers? She is juggling with life and death, as a juggler does a white ball and a black ball. No. <coughs> she is like the distracted city sharpening its weapons. Embassies visit her. The head of state comes to her door, and she receives them darkly. I beseech you, women. Not to speak against my lady, whom you know I love. You both know the wicked injustices that she has had to endure. God, protect our exiles. Lord of the holy sky, please. Lead us to that high rock that Athens loves in the olive garlands of Athens. Athens is beautiful as a lamp on a rock. Temple. At least that remains to me here in Corinth. Hack in the one day on tears and hatred. Rather, I should rejoice and sing and all forgive. And as to my enemies, I will be reconciled with them. Reconciled to them. Reconciled? As you say, reconciled. Why should they hate me? Surely I can appease those people. They say that gold will buy anything. Even love, even friendship, at least in Greece among you civilized people. <laughs> you reasonable and civilized Hellenes. In fact, we've seen it happen. They bought Jason, Jason's love, but well, I shall buy theirs. I still have two or three of the treasures that I brought from home. Things of pure and precious gold that a God gave to the kings of my ancestors. In this late, it seems to me that the light darkens into the evening. So it's a cloud. I hope for thunder. But the skies rage. My gifts will shine all the brighter. <laughs> Listen, old woman. I want you to go to Jason and tell him, <coughs> tell him, tell him that I am sick of hating and weary of evil. Tell him that I wish for peace. That I wish to send precious gifts of gold to that beautiful girl whom he has married. Tell him to come and get them, to kiss his boys before we go into exile. Tell <coughs> him to come speedily. Now run. Run and find him. Fine, I'll go. I'll run. No, I'm terrified. It's the gods, women, that evil birds do not touch our hearts. Run, run and find him, old hag. <laughs> and this woven gold veil, they are not without value. There is nothing like them in the whole world or at least the Western world. <coughs> the God of the Sun gave them to my father's father, and I have kept them here in the deep chest for some high occasion, which has now come. I have great joy in giving these gifts to Creon's young daughter. <coughs> so the glory of life consists of being generous to one's friends, and merciless to one's enemies. You all know the friend she has been to me. <laughs> <laughs> all of Corinth knows it. The slaves talk of it. The 
old stones in the walls have watched and laughed. <coughs> you see, it is almost alive. Gold is a living <coughs> thing, such pure gold. But when her body has warmed it, how it will shine. Why doesn't he come? What keeps him? I really, my lady, I've just now returned from him. He's beyond the gates watching the race when the most monstrous thing has happened. A young mare broke free of the chariot. And with her teeth tore a stallion. You take this time! It is intolerable to sit and wait. Take these things into the house and keep them at hand for when I call. You say that a mare attacked a stallion. Yes, she tore him cruelly. I saw him being led away. With a black razor in his his blood ran from his throat to the fetlock. Are you sure he's coming, nurse? Are you sure? He said that he would. Let him make haste then. Frightening. Irrational things have happened, lady. The face of nature is small as his own. Yesterday evening, his slave came up to the house. He called him. I can see her now. I see him coming. The whole palace will admire her. Stand away while I make my sick peace. Well, I have come. I tell you plainly not for your sake, the children. Why, these are king's treasures. You shouldn't, my dear. It's too much. Creon's house is gold enough of its own. Oh, so wear them. What should I want with gold and gold vanity? Black is my wear. The girl ought to be happy with such jewels and such a husband. I, her sun is rising and mine is going down. I hope to a red sunset. The little golden leaf is pretty, isn't it? You look like fine. Fine leaves. The flashing arrow sharp leaves. They have weight though. Gold is too heavy a burden for little hands. Carry them you until you come to the palace. Farewell, sweet boys. Brave little chubby pilgrims from the black waves to the white desert. Lay the gifts in her hands and come back and tell me what happened. Tell me what happened. <laughs> Rejoice, women. The gifts are given. The bait is laid. The gods rolled their great eyes over Creon's house and quietly smiled. That robe of bright flowing gold, that bride veil, that fish net to catch a young slender salmon. Not mute, she'll sing. Her body writhes in the meshes. That golden reef binds her bright head to light. She'll dance, she'll sing loudly. I would to hear that proud one howling. Look, the sun's off again. All the clouds are gone. All is gay and clear. Hi. I wish the deep earth would open and swallow us all before I do what comes next. I wish that all of life would perish and the gods and holy heaven would die. <coughs> Or my little ones come home to my own hands. It would be better for you, Medea, if the earth were to open her jaws and take you down into darkness. One thing you will not do, for you cannot. You will not hurt your own children. No rocks like plague boils ache. Your mind in the fire hate bites the purple apples of pain. No blood laughing pieces. Yes. If this were all, 